Welcome back to another episode of Musical Theater Chat. I'm here with my friend Alexa, and we're going to be talking about Mean Girls the Musical. Guess the pink, why we're both wearing pink on Wednesday. We were pink. When was the first time you saw Mean Girls the Musical, Alexa? I saw the Broadway production back in, that just opened, I want to say 2018. It was my first annual Broadway week <laughs> that I did of trips that I, annual trips I took to New York. And yeah, I specifically saw that on a Wednesday. Yeah, I want to say July 2018, I saw it. Nice. I saw it in February of 2019. I think most of the original cast was still on the show. Carrie Butler had already left because previews for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice were about to start. I the, saw her I saw her in both Mean Girls and Beetlejuice. Lucky. Damien Understudy was on, but he was still great. I saw the entire original cast. I don't think I had any understudies. <laughs> but no, I saw most of the original cast. They all signed my playbill, with the exception of Ashley Park. And then actually the last show that I saw before lockdown was the Mean Girls tour in Orlando. If you had to compare the two, is there any like, cause some diff- tours completely differ. And do you feel like the tour of Mean Girls differed as much from the Broadway version? Well, from what I've noticed, I'm not much. Did you see the tour or did you just see the original production? I only saw the Broadway production. Okay. No. So I know that for the tour, they did rewrite some of the lyrics. And I noticed that immediately mm-hmm. because they went as far as rewriting the opening number for reasons I don't understand, but whatever. Artistic yeah. choice. Because I know the opening song, it roars in the Broadway production. It opens as I'm 16, living in paradise with the lions and birds and stuff. And I think in the tour production, it's something like, I'm 16 living in Africa with all of my animal friends or something like mm-hmm. that. So like, they rewrote some of the lyrics. And I don't think it was just It Roars. I think it was some of the other musical numbers. But that was where I noticed right away that there was a change. But Mean Girls, it wasn't the first time that I noticed that they rewrote some of it, uh, some of the original material for the tour. So I don't know why they did that. I guess like I didn't really have a preference. I lean more towards the original, I guess, just because I know that one better. Mm -hmm. Um, because you know I would listen to the original Broadway cast recording like you know before I saw the show and then of course I saw the show and I would watch like all like the uh, musical numbers on like YouTube and stuff and then of course I only saw the national tour once so I guess I like prefer the original cast just because like that's what I know because I also like met that cast yeah Um, but I did also but I did like the changes that they made to the national tour because you know it's I don't know. I just liked what they did and the changes that they made. Yeah, and I feel like with tours in general, they make changes. Why do you like Mean Girls the Musical so much? I think it's because I'm part of the generation where the movie, which came out in 2004, it was just such an iconic part of like our childhood and our adolescence. And, you know, like I can't think of a time when I wasn't quoting Mean Girls. And I kind of like how they introduced it to the Broadway community and how they kind of like modernized it and everything. Mm -hmm. And just how, you know, they kind of made it more modern and they were incorporating things like emojis and like, you know, online bullying and, you know, just like, you know, like current lingo that we're using while also still using the story that we use today that we know. Yeah. But also like, like I said, make it more modern and make it more like current while also still trying to keep like iconic scenes and iconic lines that everybody knows. Because I'm telling you, when I got back from New York after I saw Mean Girls, I cannot tell you how many people were like, did they have this scene? Did they say this? And I'm like, y'all leave me alone. Yeah. But it's like, especially like you said, because the movie came out in 2004 and then the show premiered in 2018. There's so much new- 14 years later, yeah lingo and different things because like Damien wears a lot of RuPaul Drag Race shirts and RuPaul's Drag Race was like was it a big thing back in 2004 no that's like like, I want to say at least within the last decade I don't watch RuPaul so correct me if I'm wrong about that I don't watch a whole lot of it I noticed that that was something that wasn't there when the movie came out but they want to make it more present for what's going on now I think Tina Fey was amazing to make the Broadway jump and I thought it was a great idea I'm sad that the show closed due to the pandemic. I know, I'm so upset. And I feel kind of mad because I know Sabrina Carpenter was supposed to take the reins as Katie. And I think she maybe had like, what, 
two nights as mm-hmm. Katie before the show shut down. She had two so- shows and then the Broadway shutdown happened. And then I think it was a couple weeks ago, they finally announced that Bean Girls wasn't coming back. Yeah, no. So I got to feel bad for Sabrina Carpenter because I know that she was like really looking forward to it. And that like, mm-hmm. you know, she was like, making her Instagram pink and all of that. And I just feel bad for her. I mean, I'm glad that she at least got to have like a couple nights and like befriend the cast and like do the rehearsal and everything but I mean I still feel bad because like you know it's all just like oh Sabrina Carpenter is here until like mm-hmm. June or whatever and then they're like lol JK yeah so but hopefully then, like, I don't know I hope that like she'll get her chance again in the future yeah hopefully yeah. maybe they'll put her on another tour or something but it's just it's sad but yeah. I mean you know I just um it is a shame about like what happened to Mean Girls but I think they said that the tour is still going to continue yeah this tour is still continuing have you heard talk of the Mean Girls the musical movie already I have heard about that and I, I feel like that's definitely interesting because like you know obviously I'm a huge Mamma Mia fan Mamma Mia is one of my guilty pleasure musicals so obviously I'm all for like movie remakes of, you know, mm-hmm. like very popular musicals. And I think it'll be very interesting just to have uh, Mean Girls, the musical movie, because I mean, yeah, we already have like the original movie off of which the musical is based off of. Mm-hmm. But I think it'll be great just to have like a musical movie because I feel like A, it'll introduce people to, it'll introduce a new generation to the musical slash the original material of the movie. And B, I feel like it, it I, I kind of always like movie adaptations just because I feel like it's a great opportunity for people to just like be exposed to musical theater without actually being able to go to the theater, which is why I always am a big fan of like, you know, movie musicals, because, you know, some people may not be able to afford to ever go see a musical on stage in their life. So yeah. that, that's why I love when, you know, movies like Mamma Mia or, or The Prom also just came out earlier this year on Netflix and I'm obsessed with The Prom now watch it Um, great yes in the heights is also coming out later this year i think it'll be great just to like have that exposure and just to like you know uh, give it a little bit more love and everything and i think that'll just be great and i think it'll be interesting to see just uh just see like you know are they going to stick with you know like the tour production or are they going to do like the original musical production and i'm really looking forward to it if they do make a movie out of it yeah i also like that when a movie is made off of musicals. They can do so much more that they weren't able to do on stage. Because like the Riot in the Rent movie, Jonathan Larson wanted to have on stage, he couldn't have. But then they had the Riot. Yeah, I'm the Rent also, movie. and it's just you know, it's interesting because I mean, yeah, because you know, there's only so many things that you're able to do on stage. You know, with what you're able to see right there in front of you, I guess three dimensionally, if that makes sense. Yeah. And then, you know, with, with, with the cinema, with film, you have so many more ways to go. Cause you know, you could do CGI and you could mm. do like, you know, like layering or what I don't know cinema um, lingo. So I'm sorry if I'm getting any of this wrong, but like, yeah, you, you know, could, you could. more choices, like, you know, I mean, like if, for example, in the, in, in Rent, you know, we have the whole scene with Tango Maureen where they're like literally in like a dream sequence where everybody's like doing a tango where like literally in the original stage production, it's just the two of them dancing. So, you know, it will be interesting to see what they do. Like, you know, who knows, maybe with the Mean Girls musical, like we'll actually have like some like on location stuff of them actually being in Africa, you know, or mm-hmm. you know, it'll definitely be interesting. I feel like it's always exciting when a Broadway musical gets its movie. Phantom had to wait like 10 years after its show opened before it got yeah, it. something like that. I mean, of course, Phantom of the Opera is just a whole other phenomenon on it in itself. Mm. Well, normally they wait for the musical to not be making so much money, which is why we've had the struggle with getting a Wicked movie because yeah. Wicked is making so much money. They're like, why are we going to make a movie when there's people that are paying to come see it? Whereas shows like Mean Girls and Beetlejuice, which are now closed, are, will be more likely to get a movie adaptation sooner. Yeah, exactly. If you had to pick a favorite song from the show, what would it be? I really like Apex Predator. And I'd rather be me, probably just because I feel like uh, Janice is like a dream role of mine now. Um, even though I am by no means at all of the vocal uh, quality that Barrett Wilbert Reed has. Yeah, I, fun fact, I went to Broadway Flea Market uh, in 2019 and I actually sang Apex Predator for the cast of Mean Girls. Aww. Uh, not Ashley Park, though. Christina Alabado was already playing the role of Regina by the time I sang for them. But I still got to meet them. And Erica Henningsen complimented me. Um, and she was all just like, 
Oh my God, that was really good. That was amazing. And I wish Barrett was there to hear it, but she wasn't and it was fine. And Erica was actually trying to record me to put her on her Instagram story. And then when I went to go meet her in line later on, I, I had asked her, I was like, hey, did you like, did you put that on your Instagram? She's like, no, I'm sorry. I didn't catch you seeing in time, but it happened. I promise. I actually Aww. sang it for the cast and they were so great about it. You have the best like Broadway story. I <laughs> Thank you. She just got... Since we're talking about Mean Girls, I actually just got the sheet music recently. Nice. Because I started taking voice lessons in quarantine. So I was like, okay, why not? I'm just going to like grab every single musical that I can get my hands on. Mm-hmm. Nice. So one. I have that one now. Um, and then I have, I don't think I have any other Mean Girls stuff with me. I mean, I have a reusable bag that I got at the national tour, but other than that, that's it. I have the reusable bag also from the Broadway show, the Burn Book bag. Oh, the Burn Book. Yeah, yeah, that's the one I have. Mm-hmm. But no, I think I definitely like uh, Janice's songs, Apex Predator, and I'd rather be me. I guess just because, I don't know, I just really like those. And those were the ones that I would like sing in my car on my way to work. And I'd just be like, ah! like, you know, like pretending that I'm a soprano, which I am not. <laughs> I have three. Mine would have to be Stupid with Love, Revenge Party, and then Stars. Okay, so Stars is a good one. Yeah. And then I'm funny that you say Stupid with Love because I just, I don't know why. I, I really like going back to your question earlier about like, is there anything that you liked or like preferred from the tour versus the. I really liked how they made Aaron in the national tour, at least the production that I saw how his actor's african-american and so i guess that's just because like i'm also in an interracial relationship Mm -hmm. so that just that just stands out to me now because like you know little things like that if it applies to you in your life it's just like oh hey that's like me so i kind of liked how oh i know his first name is adante and i forget what his last name was so i'm sorry that i'm forgetting his name so i really kind of liked how they didn't really I, I kind of just also like colorblind casting or if it's like a character where the race is just like not important at all mm-hmm. to, you know, the character. So I kind of just liked how they made that choice and Stupid With Love, I just, I don't know, I just love, I also like Stupid With Love because it's just like such a funny, quirky song. It's a really cute song. I also like with the Broadway production because I've only seen the Broadway production. I don't know if the tour does differently, but I like how within the choreography and the set because all their desks are on wheels and all the like, cafeteria tables they move everything in the midst of the choreography yeah it was about the same in the in the broad in the touring production too i was uh, that i was actually thinking about that when i saw the show because i think by the time i had gone to see the show like they had already announced that they were like rehearsing for the tour as you saw you know like they have like you know those like special the special walls and then like all the tables are like on wheels to like choreograph with and everything so i like you know me because i'm also a huge dancer I was like, I wonder how they're going to stage all of this in the Broadway, pro- in the national tour production. And then it was pretty much the same in the national tour production as well. I also want to talk about for a minute, the character track of all the moms and the Miss Norberry. Yeah. That was an amazing idea by Tina Fey that one woman plays Katie's mom, Regina's mom, and Miss Norberry. I was like, incredible. I thought that was also a very interesting choice. But I mean, like when you think about it, as far as like not from the movie standpoint but like from like the staging standpoint they're really only on stage for maybe like two scenes each yeah so it kind of made sense to be like all right let's just have one woman play all mm-hmm. three of them rather than have three separate actresses start like you know like i i yeah. thought it was very i thought it was a very smart choice because especially if you just had someone just playing katie's mom she's hardly ever on as just katie's mom yeah but she's the one that's there for the least amount of time whereas like more Regina's mom and Miss Norbury have more stage time. Yeah, definitely. Just because, I, like, you know, we, because I mean, like, you know, Regina's mom does kind of have like a solo in the show at one point mm-hmm. for one of the reprises. I think it's What's Wrong With Me, the What's yeah. Wrong With the Reprise. And then uh, Miss Norbury, I know, I think she has a couple of lines in some of the songs. I can't think of that now. But, like, you know, obviously Miss Norbury also plays a, a key in the, in the plot just because mm-hmm. of like everything happening because most of it happens at school. Yeah. Exactly. I also really like the expansion of Gretchen's like character arc because she's not just so flatlined as she is in the movie. She has like a small character arc, but I feel like we see more of how like her mental health is. She Bart did it in such a great way. How I we- thought it was like yeah, I thought the way that they did it in the musical was like a little bit more realistic as far as like a high school standpoint. Mm-hmm. Because like you know, I feel like you know, I feel like a lot of things were dramatized in the movie, which you know worked as far as like you know the movie from a cinematic mm-hmm. standpoint. 
you know, like desperate for attention and trying to be like, mm-hmm. oh, why am I like this? Why am I so desperate for attention? Why do I have to do? And so I just kind of like that because, you know, in high school, we don't know what we want. We don't know who we should listen to. Well, I also like how, so I, spoiler alerts for anyone who's not seen Mean Girls, but if you haven't seen the movie, what is wrong? Right. I like that they have both Karen and Gretchen be like, oh my gosh, who's my boss? Who do I listen to? Fearless is the message that this show is like, Yes. Fearless and stop are the two messages that I love that this show sends out. Because it's just like, girls are not just props. People should not be be bullying each other in general. Kids should be able to go to school and not have to shrug down the hallway. They should be able to say down the hallway and feel safe and happy and not want to not go to school every day. Yeah. No, I also definitely love Karen as a character. I went as Karen for Halloween. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, I remember that. That was a really fun costume, not gonna lie. But no, I definitely love the message of Mean Girls. You know, just to be like, you know, it's like, be who you want to be. Like, don't listen to, like, other people. And that, like, you know, nobody should just be, like, you know, taken down, you know? Yeah. And I definitely, you know, pretty much what you just said. I really like that. But yeah, you know, Karen too, you know, they also, I mean, She's not just a dumb bimbo that we see mm-hmm. her be in the movie. I mean, like, yeah, she does have, like, you know, some of her one-liners and, like, her zingers in the show. But, you know, she also does have her moments where, like, you know, she talks about, like, how she was, like, bullied online and how, like, you know, it's like, oh, you should always, like, give consent whenever, like, men want to do something, blah, blah, blah. So, like, you know, I mean, yeah, it's done in a comedic fashion, but it also does give out a great message. Mm-hmm. So many stars tonight. When it says in stars, she says, "You are real, and you are just, and you are rare." I want you to say, "I see you there." Yeah. It's me and you, not us and her. Because if we knew how strong we were, I love how it's just so. Of course, like the book was written by a woman, and then her husband did the music. But you like you see so much of the woman power behind everything, and how it's by the end they realize that they're better united than divided. And then it's, and that's the message that is given off by the end of it. And I just feel like before this, because like you didn't have so much of a female message in a musical or like a so much woman power musical before like Wicked, because Wicked was like the one thing that was like a story about friendship between two women. Whereas like normally you would have a female lead and a male lead, or then you would have, or you would have Gypsy. It's a really good show. I was so sad when... They announced that they were closing because I was like, I know. No one I was so cute. Also, I just wanted to show off my Karen costume for everybody. This is my Karen costume from Halloween. The I'm a sexy mouse. And then for reference for those who haven't seen it, I have a picture of the Halloween costume from the musical. Yeah. Because so. for those of you who haven't seen the Broadway or the tour, Karen sings this song called Sexy, which is the Halloween song for the Halloween party. It's my favorite song. One of my favorites. One of my favorites. No, I do like what you were saying about how, like, it kind of, like, talks about, like, being unified and, mm. you know, kind of, like, you know, like, woman power without, like, you know, and I'm not just, I guess I'm a little bit biased just because I am a woman. <laughs> I'm like, you know, that, like, yeah, we all have our differences, but, like, that still doesn't mean that we should, like, be mean to each other or anything. Mm. And then, like, you know, in the end, we're all pretty much the same and that we should all just, like, come together and realize that our differences are what make us human. I also, last thing I'll say is I like how they took the burn book and turned it into the the wallpaper the wallpaper or like the like digital art that was like their senior art which i was like this. it was great and i loved how it would change too i loved that i loved the whole digital aspect of, mm-hmm. of, of the show and that love the set and everything and how you know like yeah it would be like the burn book pages just all the high school lingo that the class would use and everything like anytime like you know a cast member left they would just be like a oh, happy graduation mm-hmm. or, you know, and I just loved, you know, like the unity and just like how everybody came together. And also I would watch the YouTube series on Broadway.com that Erica Henningsen was filming on uh, Two Girl for School, where she would just like, you know, like record backstage and like, you know, see what was happening and explain how like they did certain scenes. And my favorite scene was probably Louder Than Lingo. <laughs> And for those who watching, uh, pretty much like there was this there was this uh, segment on this series called uh, Taylor Lauderman played uh, originally the role of Regina George. She was reading this book at the time that they were in the show where it was like 500 words to use before you die or something like that. And every single episode she would try and use a word every single day. I, don't, I always got a kick out of whenever she would try and use the word throughout the throughout the video. It was great. And then she would use it like several times throughout the video. (laughs) 
And then people would just be like, ah, and they're like, Louderman Lingo, yeah. I just, lo- and uh, I really enjoyed the two girls for school videos. Yeah, I love every time they have the lead or somebody from the cast to the Broadway vlogs. I'm like, yes, 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 yes. Uh, Taylor Louderman actually once responded to a tweet of mine too. And um, yeah, I just love when the Broadway community in general, like replies to any of my social media. And actually, fun fact, this is going back to the movie for a minute, but, you know, there was one time in Disney, I saw somebody wearing a shirt with Phil from Hercules on it, and it said, oh my god, Danny DeVito, I love your work. And I tweeted about it, and the guy who played Damien in the movie retweeted it, and I was like, oh my god, and I just loved that. I remember that made my day when that happened. Love that. I love, I love the Mean Girls cast. There's very... I mean, obviously, I love most Broadway shows that I see, and there's very few Broadway casts that I meet where I was like, this This is one of the best Broadway casts. I love the Mean Girls cast. Um, they were great. That's also one of the very few Broadway casts, with the exception of Barrett, and I know that she's a certain exception, where I've met every single person in the cast. Barrett is, like, the only person that I have yet to meet in that cast. Well, Barrett... I don't know, Barrett Wilbert Weed played uh, Janice. Yes. Um, many of you who are watching this, who are probably Broadway fans, know that Barrett um, is not a big stage door. So, I mean, hey, you know, like, I'm going to respect your wishes, and if I ever meet her, they'll be great. Um, and I also just remember, Damien, I think you'll appreciate this. When I met Gray Henson, who played Damien in the show, mm-hmm. um, I didn't realize until I saw the show that I had seen him in Book of Mormon way, way back. Um, and he played one of the, I forget the name of the specific character, but he plays the gay Mormon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mormon, right and so I'm talking to Gray Henson and I told him I was like oh hey I don't know uh, he's like oh you probably don't remember me but I saw you in Book of Mormon in like 2015 and he goes and he goes oh okay yeah 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 he goes he goes oh so you saw me in Book of Mormon? I go yeah I didn't realize it was you it, it was you until you started tap dancing and stop and then he goes he goes oh that makes sense because they're both tap dancing homosexuals <laughs> I figured you'd enjoy that story <laughs> Yeah, I want to play Damien so badly, but I don't know how to tap dance to save my life. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, neither do I, and yet I love tap dancing. I know, like, the basics, mm-hmm. and I feel like with anything in a Broadway show where you need to, like, do something for a scene, you could easily learn. My playbill from the national tour. Nice. I'm also really weird about playbills, and if there's, like, any similarity, pretty much I like it when there's, like, different covers, the diff- so I like that they had a different cover than when I saw it. Yeah, so I have that design that you have. And this is the Broadway one. Yeah, that's the Broadway one. It's the same one I have. I'm trying to find it. I've seen a lot of shows pre-lockdown, so forgive mm. me. You're good. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Here's Mean Girls. Of course, it's the last one. And then, so yeah, here's my Broadway one. And then this is the National Tour. So I kind of like how there's, like, differences. Yeah, me too. Yeah. When I got my, during intermission, during, um, when I got my cup, because I collect these. If there's a cup available, I'll get it. And um, they had a thing, as I'm sure you know, at, at, they had something called, uh, it was either called the pink drink or on Wednesdays we drink pink. It was like one of those. I think that's what this was. On Wednesdays we drink pink. Yeah, out. yeah. So and th- it was like, it was. I think it was like lemonade and like cram. It was like pink lemonade and like cranberry juice and vodka or something. Mm-hmm. And I don't normally drink alcohol, but I was like, okay, I'm at a Broadway show. I'm going to drink the themed beverage. So mm-hmm. that's what I did. I was like, I'm going to get the pink drink. Alexa also has a YouTube channel, which I will link below. You should go check her out. She has a bunch of really cool snack videos from different countries. They're really fun yeah, to watch. Yeah, that's been my latest series. Um, I, I, do, I use them. Um, this is not sponsored in any shape or form. I'm putting that out there. Okay. So I, I've been, I subscribed um, to this product, to this company called uh, Universal Yums. And every month they send you a, a snack box of, of um, different snacks from different countries. So that's been my latest series on my YouTube. But I also have my travels on my YouTube page. I have my, my Disney escapades. I have, and also the musicals that I go see, which I guess is incorporated to my travel section. So she was um, an avid traveler before this wonderful pandemic we're all in hand. Dr. F- Dr. Fauci himself said that he feels like mm-hmm. um, Broadway will be opening up uh, should be good by the fall. So if he says so, then I trust his opinion, obviously. Mm-hmm. I've just been trying to like stay active in the arts because I mean, obviously I'm very passionate about it because yeah yeah, we, we, yeah. And, I have, and i have like literally a drawer full of musical shirts thank you i was trying to wear the one that literally says all of the girls name and the my name on the bottom i walked uh, up to the merch no, cart was, and I, 
I walked into the merchandise guy. I'm like, need that shirt. My name's on it. Give me that shirt. Thank I need that shirt. My name's on it. I love that. That's so funny. For those of you that are wondering what shirt that was, if you go back to Vlogoween, I'm wearing it in the mini mall haul video. Another funny story that I have from, from my Mean Girls. So, so I saw Mean Girls by myself and I do not mind going to the theater by myself. Anyway, and so then, you know, Jody and I just very briefly spoke. <laughs> And, you know, we were all just like, oh, hi, can I get a selfie with you? I'm a huge Little Mermaid fan, blah, blah, blah. And I had a Little Mermaid phone case on my phone at the time. And I took a selfie with her. And then she went back. And then we watched the rest of Act 2. And it was fine. At mean Girl, the Mean Girls matinee, very casually approached her. And I was like, hi again. And she saw me. And she was like, oh, hi. And so we started talking again. I it was so funny. And I, I, hang on, I'm trying to find the photo that I took. And I didn't realize it until later. But like literally, I took a selfie in front of the theater. You can see Jody Benson just photo bombing me. Here we go. So here, right here, here's my selfie, and then that's Jody Benson right there. <laughs> but it kind of worked to my benefit because this picture Jody Benson actually took for me. I love that. So yeah, I got to meet the voice actress of my favorite Disney princess while watching um my one of my current favorite musicals. I love my Broadway trips, and like Damien said, I have a lot of Broadway stories. <laughs> She does. She meets all the fun people. I do. Well, thank you, Alexa, for joining me for a Mean Girls musical theater chat. I know we can both ramble on and on and on. Oh, absolutely. No, so, I mean, dude, I mean, you had me at musical theater chat. So. Yes, we'll definitely have to do another one of these soon. Yeah, this was so much fun. I'm all for it. Thank, thank you for inviting me. I had such a great time and I can't wait to see the final product for this. Oh my God, I love your unicorn slippers. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. There will definitely be more Alexa and Damien musical theater chats. As she just said, you guys saw the binder. We have more to talk about. Thank you, Damien. Bye. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.